Good morning to everyone on this Monday of Holy Week. We hope to have a number of reflections throughout the days ahead from Monday to Friday. We journey with Jesus as he walks to the cross. We remember that in that time he carried many concerns and sorrows and griefs, yet he was not going to be distracted. We're going to begin each day with a reading and then we think of what's coming out of that passage. Reading from Matthew's Gospel and Matthew chapter 26. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely not I, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, Yes, it is you. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. I, I want to take you back over the years to an experience I had at primary school. I imagine we're going back to the uh, early 1960s. My primary school was a country school out of Lisburn a few miles, just a few rooms. A school where people knew one another intimately, where people grew up together. It was a wet day on one occasion. And you have to imagine, what do you do with pupils in a small country primary school with no assembly hall? We were all packed together into what we would have called the entrance. It was a cloakroom. The coats were all hanging along the wall and the pegs, uh, a few wash hand basins, and we were jammed in. It was such a bad day. And then suddenly something happened. There was a bit of a crash. And a, a row of coat hangers on a plank fell down. Everyone knew there would be um, a problem, to put it that way. We knew that the school teacher would uh, probably have their type of inquiry amongst us. And in those days, a cane would be used. So I, I must say, not in my bravery, ran up the corridor into another area where some people were. I felt, well, I wasn't swinging on it. I didn't bring it down. It's not my fault. I'm not to blame. That was fine for a few minutes. And then I heard the steps of the principal. In those days, he was still called the master. The door opened, and with his finger and look at me, I was brought. Brought forward, walked with him, and I joined the rest of the boys. We were made to line up. 
stretch out our hand and we knew what was coming. I still remember the cane. It was a, a thin, almost Dickensian stick, a curve and then a handle. It was light, but it was fast. The hand went out and a quick swish and we got it on the palm. The cane was not used widely, but when it did happen, it wasn't even just the pain, but in a sense, the guilt. My attitude always was, but it's not me. I'm not guilty. And yet I was found out. I also felt, but I hadn't actually brought the whole plank down. I wasn't swinging on it. I'm not guilty. But I was, in one sense, because I was there. And I tried to get away and distance myself. I learned a lesson that day in life, which I've never forgotten. Always accept the blame when you know it's your fault. Always accept the blame and don't pass it to somebody else. As we say in Northern Ireland, sometimes you have to learn the hard way. But it's not me. I'm not to blame. Those are the words I think we can put over the passage which is before us today. From the Gospel, telling us about Jesus and the disciples. If I paint that scene for you again. Jesus is having a meal. A meal with his close friends. In the culture of that period, to have a meal together meant that you were very close and you were sharing in a very deep way. You were accepted together. So Jesus had arranged for this final meal. The disciples were with him, not sitting on chairs as we imagine, but as the text tells us, reclining once again, as would have been the culture and custom of the time. And then Jesus said something alarming. He said, One of you will betray me. The reaction from each of them was immediate. Surely not me, Lord. I can't be blamed. Is it me? Surely not I. And it seems all the disciples were responding. Even Peter, whom later we know actually denied Jesus. Surely not me, Lord. I wouldn't do it. And then Jesus said something, how he was going to focus in on the person, the one who dips his bread in the bowl when I do, is the one who will betray me. Once again, at that time, you would have had a piece of bread, you'd have dipped it in the bowl, and that was a sign of sharing deeply in a meal. We only can imagine, was Jesus passing the bowl when Judas was there? And Judas and Jesus' hand went into the bowl? Because Jesus had a response from Judas. Judas said, but surely not me, Lord. And Jesus replied, yes, it's you. When I read those words, I've often said to myself, then why did the disciples not react to what Ju Judas had said? We need to look at the text, the passage, and when we do, we find that those words which we translate, yes, it's you, could also be translated in the Aramaic. Well, you have said so. So that Jesus may have been actually answering in that style. Once again, why did the disciples not respond, having heard it? It is likely that Jesus bent over to Judas and quietly said, You've said so. And then they continued with the meal. Judas, an unusual character. Earlier in the passage, 
you would read that he actually accepted the pieces of silver to betray Jesus. And here he is denying that he would actually disown Jesus and hand him over to his enemy. To betray someone is even greater than distancing yourself from them. Especially when we read that Judas was with Jesus, eating from the bowl of Jesus, and to have done so would have meant that G Judas would have been very close to Jesus at that table. So here is Judas Iscariot, an unusual character. Did he betray Jesus just for the money? I, I'm not really sure of that. There seem to have been perhaps other reasons. Certainly there is a dark side to Judas. Something happened to Judas. And he couldn't turn away from what he was going to do. Surely not me. I can't take the blame. That's the title over this passage. And yet as you and I read it, and maybe put ourselves around the table with others, we might be tempted to say the same. It's a human reaction. It's not my fault. And yet somewhere in the story we know when we are not faithful to Jesus. In a sense, we have betrayed him. And when we look at life, and say, surely not me, would I do it? Then that question comes to us in a new and deep way today.